Hello and welcome to a special presentation from In The Money Media. We're talking about Kentucky Derby pedigrees. Loads of info all about the Derby across our In The Money Media website. We want to hear from you. Let us know. Are you, are you a pedigree geek? Who do you think is going to be the most suited to this mile and a quarter test on the first Saturday in May? Let us know who you think is going to win. We'd love to keep this conversation going in the comments. I don't know a whole lot about pedigrees. I'll be honest with you. I, I know what I know as a handicapper, but when it comes to talking to you about a topic like this, I'm going to reach to somebody who really, really loves this stuff. And I'm fortunate to have with us today a woman who's been writing about pedigrees for us over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com. She is Alex Henry. Alex, how are things? Things are great. Super excited to talk about pedigrees and geek out a little bit. <laughs> We're going to start off looking at these horses at the top of the market because they're the ones people, I think, have the most questions about. And we won't get so much into the form and other things. You can find those videos elsewhere. You know, if you subscribe to our In The Money page and click the notification bell, you will not miss uh, any of the 30 or so videos I think we're going to have in the end covering this race. But here I really want to talk about these horses vis-a-vis -vis the mile and a quarter. And, and Alex, the horse I want to start uh, talking about is... The, the presumptive favorite, though uh, Sierra Leone and his backers may have something to say about that. I want to talk about fierceness. So much has been made about this horse in, in terms of his his brilliance, the, the will he or won't he, which one is going to show up. What about just on a simple bloodlines perspective? What do you think about fierceness and his ability to run this mile and a quarter? So he really reminds me a lot of his sire, City of Light. Uh, lest we forget, City of Light won the Pegasus World Cup and Oakland Handicap um, really flashed a lot of brilliance throughout his career. And Fierceness has done just that. Of course, field topping buyer of 110, a field topping throw graph of negative three and a half. Um, in terms of pedigree, I believe he's suited. So as aforementioned, that's City of Light won uh, those two grade, those two graded stakes um, over nine furlongs. And so while he may not have been able to get just quite get 10, that's where the damn side comes in. And his he's out of a, a mare called Nona Bella. She herself by Stay Thirsty. We remember Stay Thirsty as winner of the Traverse Stakes and runner up in the Belmont Stakes. So we know he at least liked to get classic distances, especially as a three-year-old. He's able to infuse that precociousness into his, um, you know, his offspring and his his grand offspring. Um, well, his dam didn't really do too much. Um, Nana Bella only raced five times, winning two of them, and those two wins came at pretty short distances. Her dam was Nona Mia, and she carried quite a bit of stamina influence from her sire, a Belmont Stakes winner, Empire Maker. Uh, and that class is also just infused all into his dam line uh, with her dam, Holy Babette, who you may recognize on the pedigree of Cairo Prince, who won the Holy Bull Stakes at eight and a half furlongs of the Nashua Stakes at a mile. So I think he has that wonderful dam line that has that nice pedigree, a Belmont winner, Belmont runner-up, Travers winners, and then has that really scary fast speed from City of Light, who was also able to carry over a route of ground. And we've seen this idea that's been espoused by trainers. We've had Brad Cox on the show saying this, that these days they they, they almost look more for the mile, mile and a 16th, mile and an eighth type pedigrees. And then they have brilliance and they train them to get the rest. So when you have a horse that's shown this kind of brilliance and has that kind of damn side pedigree, I wouldn't worry so much about the fact that City of Light himself wasn't a mile and a quarter winner. Sounds like if something doesn't mean he has to win, but if he doesn't win, it ain't the pedigree that's going to beat this one. Is that fair to say? I think that's very fair to say. Yep. Let's move on to the other horse who may end up vying for favoritism, if you believe the bookmakers in uh, in England anyway. I'm talking about a very, very likable horse uh, in the form of Sierra Leone, another one who's really done everything right, a progressive type. I suppose he needs to act a little better when it gets time to, to go into the stalls, but you know they're going to be working on that one. Same question with him. From a pedigree point of view, at what distance do you think this one's going to be his best? Do you think he'll be suited to a test like the Kentucky Derby? I think he's another one who's extremely well suited for the Kentucky Derby. I really struggle to think of another year where the top three betting, most likely betting choices are quite rich in stamina in terms of their pedigree. So Sierra Leone being a gun, son of gun runner, it's, you know, hard to give an appropriate introduction to gun runner. You know, he's, 
I would say, equaled, if not done better as a sire as he did on the racetrack. Um, just a brilliant racehorse. He's able to sire anything from, you know, sp sprint killers like an Echo Zulu um, to horses that like a little bit of more of a route of ground, uh, like Taba and Cyberknife. So there's no issues on the sire side. So I'd like to focus a little bit more on his dam side. So he's out of a mare um, called Heavenly Love, herself by Malibu Moon. And uh, she's stakes placed. Um, she's, well, she's a daughter of a stakes, she is a stakes placed daughter of a mare called Darling My Darling by Deputy Minister. Uh, her dam, Darling My Dor Darling, is quite the producer. She folds a grade two winner um, in a Forever Darling, uh, who in turn actually folds a Forever Young. So there's connections all over the place in this field. Uh, so that kind of relates to Real Own and Forever Young a little bit, who I know we'll speak about a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, so I think that there's plenty of plenty of stamina there. If you look further back, um, you know, Heavenly Love broke her maiden at Kentucky Downs over six furlongs. That's kind of a testing weird track. Uh, then she, you know, trainer Cat Mark Cassie thought that her aptitude would translate well into dirt and entered her in Keeneland's grade one Alcibiade stakes. And she... She won that by five and a half lengths over eventual grade two winner, Princess Warrior. So there's just class all over his pedigree. I don't think the stamina will be a problem at all. If there is a problem, it's going to be he's stuck in traffic and can't get out. I'm very intrigued by this pedigree connection. I mean, in human terms, what are we talking about here? Second cousins? Like how I don't recall two as closely related horses being uh, competing in a, in a classic race, at least not in the USA before. How, how notable, how notable is that to you? And do you have any sort of human analogy for it? I guess you could call it a second or a third cousin um, on the dam side, of course. Uh, but anything is a positive, in my opinion. We already know Forever Young can get basically ran a mile and a quarter in the, uh, in the UAE Derby. So I really don't have any questions. Sierra Leone has run fast. Uh, his come home times have been quite fast. He's run fast buyers. Uh, his thoroughbred backs that up as well. Um, I think that these cousins could do quite well in the Kentucky Derby this year. <laughs> I'll definitely have an exacta, cousin exacta. <laughs> I have a feeling that will be a well represented exacta among your portfolio of plays. This is the obvious segue to talk about Forever Young. You were on our JRA sponsored Japanese Runners special. So I, I, you've tipped your hand to me anyway about how much you like this horse. The perfect five for five overcoming adversity. We've talked about the, the dam side of the pedigree being suited and the fact that you, you have to worry a little bit less about how suited they are on pedigree when they've essentially already done the task, but at least for academic purposes, tell us about the sire side and, and how far you think this horse really wants to run. Absolutely. I think this horse wants to run all darn day long. He's sired by a Japanese royalty and real steel, steel who has plenty of Japanese, plenty of U.S. influence as well as Japanese influence. So Real Steel, um, he was born in the same generation, unfortunately, to his detriment as stars like Duramente, Maurice, Kitasan Black. And despite this, he still acquitted himself well as a racehorse, winning the 2016 Dubai Turf. Uh, that was over nine, about nine furlongs, approximately. That's 1,800 meters. And although he wasn't versing those uh, you know familiar rivals back then, Still, to be something to be noted, that's a very respected race on turf. It took more than 12 months for Real Steel to find his next win, and that came in the grade two Mainichi Okan, and that was also over 1,800 meters or nine furlongs. And this horse just really showed up all the time. He really was a hard knocker. He was in the money 11 of 17 times, uh, like one over 7 million US dollars. And of course, his sire being my favorite non US. Uh, brand runner in Deep Impact, a 2005 Japanese Triple Crown winner. And Deep Impact himself having sired, or having sired a male Triple Crown winner in Japan. And I'd like to recall for those not familiar with the Japanese Triple Crown, the longest race is the Japanese St. Ledger, uh, which is over 3,000 meters. So that's what almost, almost two miles long. Um, so stamina has to be in very much an influence for the horses to get that route of ground. Also want to call out uh, Deep Impact was the sire of uh, female Triple Crown winner, Gentle Donna. And, you know, I really just love how, as opposed to in the U.S. where we kind of built, we kind of breed for, you know, perhaps speed on the sire side and more stamina on the dam side or on the dam line or vice versa. This horse has it on both sides. 
Um, we did talk a little bit about his dam forever darling, who is a U.S. Kentucky bred mare who was purchased and sent over for uh, broodmare duties in Japan. And, you know, she quitted herself well as also. Uh, she won over $200,000. She won the grade two Santa Inez stakes. And that was, you know, that was over six and a half furlongs. So that she has that speed. But she, you know, also quitted herself well being second in the listed uh, Santa Anita, Anita, excuse me, Angel's Flight stakes over seven furlongs. Uh, but, you know, uh, Brito Yoshida has had success in the past um, with, with horses like this, kind of infusing that speed and stamina. Um, to call out a little bit more of her stamina, um, she was imported in full to Japan, in full to Frankel, actually. Uh, that foal was named Monfavori. Um, he's won twice, or three times, excuse me, and um, in the most recent, most, most recently won over $600,000 over a route of ground as well. So I think that she has the ability to produce horses that, you know, have a little bit of her speed and are sharp, but also a nice blend of, of stamina as well, by, by all means. And of course, as we mentioned earlier with Sierra Leone, this horse is like a third, second or third cousin of Sierra Leone. So, and we talked about the stamina influences and his pedigree on the dam side. So I, I don't have any concerns about this horse being competitive over 10 furlongs. All right. At the end of the video, I'm going to come back to you and ask you to try to split uh, the, the top three. It's a hard question from this far out in terms of where your support is leaning for the Kentucky Derby. But uh, you know, positives are important when it comes to pedigree. Negatives can be even more important. Uh, we don't have anything super low in odds, though. One horse that could be in the 12, 15 to 1 range that we were talking about before. Let's talk about who you question their ability to get this mile and a quarter. Do, do a couple of minutes on that before we throw in a long shot that you like on pedigree, and then we'll bring you back for the, for the final answer as we get uh, to the very end of the video, Alex. Start, start with one of the ones that you, you have a little bit of a question about. Absolutely. First and foremost, Track Phantom is on my no-no list. Um, has a great pedigree for like the Met Mile maybe, but not for this mile and a quarter test. He's by quality road out of Miss Sunset by Into Mischief. He has a Trunix rating of A++, so great rating. But again, I don't think he wants any part of 10 furlongs or a mile and a quarter. He did win the, the grade three Lecomte, but he's come up short in the Risen Star and, you know, we can blame a we can blame the trip. We can blame not liking the racetrack, but he was a disappointing fourth in the Louisiana Derby. And he he came home in uh, 37.91 seconds, his last three furlongs in the Louisiana Derby. He really backed up um, from the lead to finish fourth. So his only wins, for my opinion, have come when he's able to dictate the pace, kind of slow it down, have it his own way. And of course, the pedigree doesn't help here. So Quality Road, you know, for himself, kind of like City of Light, he went up to nine furlongs, a mile and an eighth. Uh, but when that extra furlong was added in the Travers and the Jockey Gold Cup and the Breeders' Cup Classic, he wasn't able to sustain a run. So I firmly believe that's a hard cutoff nine furlong top uh, performer right there. His dam, Miss Sunset, it was a super cool horse when she raced. She had 20 starts. She won half of them, won 10 times. Very competitive cow bred, but in sprint distances. She was a 20, 2017 Raven Run Stakes winner at Keeneland over seven furlongs. She only managed to carry her speed longer than seven furlongs once, and that was in a listed uh, stakes uh, on Tapita at Golden Gate. So I really don't see any help here of Quality Road's lack of stamina, lack of desire for classic distances. The dam isn't going to help here at all. Um, only one other full of the race from this dam um, named O'Connor Sunset, and his he's most recently won a six and a half furlong allowance race at Charlestown. So definitely not seeing it here with Track Phantom. Yeah, and that supports the visual impression and, and what the clock is saying. And I think this info could be the most useful on that. You know, you don't want to spend too much time, you know, knocking a horse that's going to be 20 to 1, etc. But at the same time, for your exotic bets, you need to know. I mean, this is a horse that's going to be there quite possibly at the pace call, quite possibly not there at the wire. Um, you know, no offense to him, maybe a cutback uh, and, and it'll do great things going shorter, but uh, probably not for, for Derby Day, at least not on your and my tickets. Who, who's the other runner you had some questions about? Yeah, the other runner I have a question about, major question, is Stronghold. So our Santa Anita Derby winner uh, received an 89 buyer for that effort. Uh, he's by Ghost Sapper. So his, his pedigree is tricky. So like we have Ghost Sapper, right? And we're like, oh, like Breeders' Cup Classic winner. He got that massive buyer, like very visually impressive. Like he clearly was a mile and a quarter horse. 
However, he has Jimmy Creed on the bottom side. So his damn spectator by Jimmy Creed. Uh, this dam was a grade two winner as a two-year-old in the Sorrento Stakes, over six and a half furlongs. She was mildly competitive as a three-year-old, uh, finishing second to the great, the queen, Midnight Bisu in the 2018 Santa Anita Oaks. Uh, but spectators out of a Henny Hughes mare. So we have Jimmy Creed on top for her, Henny Hughes on the bottom, um, not really adding anything regarding stamina there. And um, on... Yeah, speed, 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 speed everywhere. And then to add to that, we have Swiss Yodeler uh, uh, as a you know a sire, a great grandsire on the dam side. We have Hooked on the Feeling, uh, the dam of Jimmy, Cre Jimmy, Jimmy Creed, who also was pure speed as well. She was multiple stakes winner sprinting. And we also have Meadow Lake, who was notable for siring precocious uh, young speedsters as well. Uh, so I just don't, I really don't like uh, the way he's been running as well in these longer distances. So of note, um, he has the, the slowest final furlong time and the slowest final three furlong uh, come home time of any major, of any prep winner um, on my list. He came home in 38.69 seconds at the Santa Anita Derby. And that's definitely reflected in that 89 buyer speed figure. He can't even crack a 90 before the Derby. So I just really think he's a toss for me. He'll probably take a little. I think he might end up taking a little bit of money. I think that there, I've heard a couple of stories about him. That's that's an interesting one, and you make a real good case on pedigree. We should point out that we're not meaning to, you know, bash these horses. I mean, you talked about uh, in the in the in the context of Track Phantom, the 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 Knicks rating, something that is very respected that breeders use. But that's more for I think isn't that more for trying to 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 gauge you know, a chance of being a successful winner and or brilliance. We're talking quite specifically about a very difficult task here, running uh, running 10 furlongs this this early in the career. I, I did want to just underline the difference between a good pedigree and a good pedigree for this, lest we, we upset any of the breeders out there. <laughs> exactly. And just for those who aren't as familiar with the true Knicks rating or familiar with Knicks at all, as a, you know, other than, you know, Knicks go, um, <laughs> the horse, um, so Nix and True Nix as, as a company. So what is, as PTF, as you said, uh, they take the sire and the sire's results as compared to the pedigree, like the grandsire um, of a hypothetical offspring. So for example, when I say, and even Stronghold has an excellent pedigree, you know, being by Ghost Zapper out of a Jimmy Creed mare. So he's a A++ rating on the True Nix website, an excellent mating. In fact, uh, when I ran, I tabulated the mating, it, it asked me to reach out to the farm so we, I can get my mare bred to go sapper because his pedigree was so good. So the breeders have done an excellent job there. It just takes other things into consideration, like a close a relatives. Um, do they share a grandsire, a great grandsire, a sire line or a dam line? So that's when we talk about Nick's excellent breeding, but just not my choice for a 10 furlong test. And for the uninitiated, the concept of a Nick is the way basically a, a is, is it quite specifically the way a sire and a dam sire and, and how those intersect, that intersection is, is called a nick in, in the breeding world, if I understand it correctly. Again, not really exactly. my world. I'm, I'm usually just betting on the things. But boy, any chance I get to, 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 to learn about the history and get into the pedigree, I, I love to take it. You had a long shot. We got two more questions for you. One was a long shot you wanted to mention. And my my crack tech team, we did not have this graphic at the beginning of the video, but we do have one now that I can uh, that I can flash up on the screen for this for the, for this horse. So to, uh, tell us the the long shot you think has a shot on the bloodlines. Absolutely, my long shot and with the twentieth out of twenty on the list right now of Derby points just got in um, is Grandmo the first. Uh, he's a true Knicks A rating, so another great job on the breeding there. He's very well bred. He's by Uncle Mo out of Lily So Fair by Giants Causeway. Uh, he's run, you know, his third graph rating has been very progressive. He His last two starts, he's paired sixes, so he's poised to move forward in this next start. Um, although he's only an allowance winner as a two-year-old, he's been very competitive. He's been right there for you know for show money and the tampa bay derby won by domestic products and also third in the florida derby won by of course fierceness as mentioned earlier and um, uncle mo how can we give uncle mo introduction gorgeous gorgeous dark based son um colt stallion excuse me and two-year-old champion breeders Cup juvenile champion uh has already sired a kentucky derby winner and night and nyquist in 2016 um, I, for this part, I want to I want to really highlight the similarity in breeding between Nyquist and Grandmo the First. 
So uh, Nyquist, Nyquist Dam, his, his, on his dam side, his grand, her grandsire was Stormcat, and uh, Grandma the First also shares that same breeding. So again, we talk about Nyx. That's a pretty interesting Nick, although it's not as close up as a grandsire, for example, directly from Grandma the First. Um, it is still, you know, sons of Giant's Causeway. Um, for Grandma the First, you know, that son, or son of um, Stormcat, excuse me, Giant's Causeway being a son of Stormcat, and then for Nyquist, Forestry being a son of uh, Stormcat on that side. So that's the connection there. His damn Lily So Fair carries stamina through her sire. Um, of course, Giant's Causeway, he globe trotting, awesome, awesome runner on turf and dirt. The Iron Horse. Uh, yeah, Iron Horse, yes. Uh, her dam is Wildwood Flower, who has been quite a prolific producer. Wildwood Flower, so this is again Grandma the first grand dam on his dam side, his dam's dam. Wildwood Flower has fold two graded stakes winners already um, in the unfortunate ill-fated materiality, but boy was he brilliant when he when he was running and when he was healthy. He was a Florida Derby winner, the Islamorada handicap winner, both over nine furlongs, so you know stamina indication there. And also uh, she fold my Miss Sophia, so winner of the Gazelle over nine furlongs and second in the Kentucky Oak, Oaks, of course, over nine furlongs as well. And more amazing stakes ability in this family too. My Miss Sophia was bred to Warfront and subsequently produced multiple turf graded stakes winner Annapolis, uh, who just recently went off to stud. And uh, Wildwood Flo Flowers 2016 offspring has also stamped herself as a producer uh, her name is Wildwood Rose, and any guesses on who she's the dam of? Uh, well, hopefully a, a filly by the name of Leslie's Rose is uh, yep. ringing a bell. Our yep. grade one, 2024 grade one Ashland Stakes winner, who is po poised for a great one at the Kentucky Oaks the day before the Derby. So just class all over this pedigree. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Rich Strike, just, you know, kind of always shows up. He always is, you know, in that trifecta, but... I think that with the class and the stamina influences, he could be a sleeper long shot on Derby Day. Very, very interesting for underneath potentially. And who knows, as, as you invoked the name of Rich Strike, uh, sometimes these, the, these horses you can maybe make a wise guy underneath case for step up. Last question. If I made you pick from this far out between the, those, those top three in the market, which way are you leaning? How can I go against my GRA family? I got to go for every young man. <laughs> Fierceness might wake up with a tummy ache and not want to run. Sierra Leone might be behind a wall of horses and come late. I'm choosing Forever Young based on this logic. I know he's he hates kick, he, he hates kickback. That's been a publicized, well-publicized thing from his trainer, um, Yahagi San, has said from the UAE Derby and from the Saudi Derby or Saudi Cup. So that means Jockey Sakai is going to have him out on the outside and he's tactical enough not to throw a crown pride and be rank and want the lead. He can sit and he's shown he can sit. He can sit almost near last if he needs to. But the whole thing is that he's a big horse. He's uh, last clocked in at 525 kilograms. That's a big boy. So almost 1200 pounds there. He's going to be on in the clear, hopefully on the outside, not getting kicked back. And just, if he's good enough, he's good enough. And you, he'll be grinding late. I accidentally took you out there for a second. I meant oh, to take a picture out. Great stuff, Alex. Really appreciate you. This is what happens when you try to produce yourself here uh, on a Friday night. Really appreciate all the great information and looking forward to working with you a lot more as uh, 2024 marches on. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. For Alex, I'm PTF. Make sure you subscribe to our In The Money channel on YouTube. Drop us a comment as well. Click that notification bell. Do all those good things. We're going to be back with way more Kentucky Derby content. Until then, may you win all your photos.